Hey, Captain Ross Robertson with Big Water Fishing. You know, you hopefully have seen our videos, shenanigans, podcasts, whatever it may be. Well, here's what we're doing now, if you haven't seen. A project boat. Why would I buy a 20 year old boat? I have no idea. But we really wanted to have a little tiller boat. They're kind of a cult like following. They didn't make them that long. The Ranger 618. We took this just absolutely destroyed, tore up, hit, whatever you want to call it, smashed up boat. And we rebuilt this thing from top to bottom. On part nine of the project boat, we tear into quite literally the lids. So we had a couple of the lids that were a little soft and we just decided to basically replace those since we were going to tear the carpet off and redo the flooring, which is going to be upcoming. But once we had this all torn apart, it was just the perfect time to redo those lids. And so we called in my buddy, Captain Chip Cartwright, who knew a whole lot more about it than I did. And this is quite the project, but it can definitely save you a lot of money and improve your vessel greatly. You know, we're putting all new flooring down. We're gonna get rid of the carpet completely. So really kind of one of the steps we have to do with all of the lids is remove the carpet and the hardware. So that involves drilling out the rivets that are holding the hinges the hardware for the latch, and then of course the carpet. So a few simple steps to get this done, just kind of some manual labor. So we had a very soft compartment and you can see we cut this out with a little zip tool there and it's just a foam core deal. And it broke down whether it was water or just because it was really old. So Captain Chip here zipped this thing out. We separated it, kind of cleaned it up. And ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece uh, of plywood in there, but we're actually using multiple pieces of plywood. And why is that? Well, with the plywood, instead of the foam, foam, you get no, if, with the humidity change or moisture or anything, the plywood will tend to warp on you or pull and your hatch won't lay flat. The foam lays nice and flat. So what we do is we cut the, the plywood into smaller pieces so it won't freaking twist or bend on you or anything. So, plus that way we can wrap it underneath. I left a little lip for the corner so we can wrap it underneath the lip and do it, you know, half and half. So you can tuck them in there and then it won't bend on you. It'll be nice and straight and flat once we glue that down, glue the, the and glass back on top. You're gonna basically just epoxy that back in yeah. place. We'll epoxy right in place and that'll be uh, one. good as new. All right, Captain, so we've got the pieces cut. Now we're just gonna epoxy those in place. Yep, we're gonna use our uh, West System epoxy. That's what I like to use. There's a bunch of different epoxies out there. It just works good for me. I like it, so I'm used to using. Uh, our jigsaw puzzle, it's all the little pieces of wood that are gonna go in here. We'll wet everything out, slap it all together, put a little, uh, I got some additive to make it thick so, um, fill in the cracks and the joints. Okay. And then we'll slap the top piece of fiberglass back on, put a little weight on here. We have a nice flat surface, so the hatch comes out nice and flat. All right. And tomorrow morning, be good as new. And so that epoxy, we're using a hardener that's like five to one. Is that what you said? Yes, it's a, it's a five to one. And this is a fast hardener. They make really slow hardeners if it's really hot out, but um, it just creates a little longer pot life. Um, but we'll mix up in smaller batches, paint it on, and. It, uh, and rubber gloves. And rubber gloves. Because it's messy. So when it goes in the back in that wedge, we want a little, a little thick so to take up some of the gaps that we didn't uh, cover. Paint a little in the back here. Now we got it all buttered up, thick served up. We're just going to slide it right in, goes right in there, push it nice and tight, got a nice little bead of epoxy coming out. All right, now we've got all the pieces in here, we got a little bit of a gap so we can make sure we can get everything in there. So we got to fill it in. This is some, a lot thicker, it's like paste, so it doesn't run. We just mush that down into the cracks. Fill everything and then scrape it off nice and level. In goes the top piece. And like any good fisherman, what do we weigh it down with? 
So Captain Chips got this whole thing put together. Basically just, he had me cut a piece of wood and then make sure you wrap it in plastic or that will become part of the deal and epoxy shut. And we just got these clamps here and we're gonna tighten the corners down. And on the back side there, just that nice anchor. Make sure that it all stays in one piece. All right, we've got the core glued back in. We used a plywood core. So that's why I haven't uh, fiberglassed the seam here. I think that the plywood will support that seam. Um, it makes it this a lot easier for fairing instead of putting glass over top of here, which we normally do if we went back with a foam core. You need to support that joint. We don't have to because of the plywood. So we're just going to fill in this seam, make it look nice, clean it all up good, and we'll gel coat that the inside to match the outside. And it'll all look nice and pretty. All right, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to mix up a little bit of a Bondo, just a, any kind of filler agent, because we've got some inconsistencies that's a little wobbly. We're going to straighten this up a little bit and fill in the edges around here, because um, there was carpet on here before, so we didn't need it to look nice. Now we're going to have a little edge around where the, before the EVA foam, so we want that nice and smooth, and then we'll gel coat it. It'll look slick as a whistle, nice and smooth. All right, we're going to rough sand this with 60, 80 grit. Get the big uh, stuff down, then we'll go back and finish sand it with 150 before we gel coat it all. All right, before we install his hatches again with the hinges, we're going to clean them up a little bit, make them nice and pretty. Here's one side I cleaned up already, this side's not. We're just going to hit it with a scotch Bright pad and shine it right up. Getting ready to gel coat now. We're mixing up, uh, we're putting the catalyst in here. Going off our mix chart here. Then we're going to put a little waxing agent in there to help it set up. So, you know, redoing those lids is going to add a lot of value, just make that boat feel a lot sturdier. And we definitely didn't want to do that after we put the new flooring on. So really happy that we did that. But as you can see there, the one thing that we really learned was, is the gel coating was something to outsource to the professionals. And rolling on the black gel coat just was not working very well. And it was not going to look great, even though the new flooring is going to cover a majority of that. Sometimes you got to know when to hire things out and where, you know, where you can actually save money by doing stuff yourself. So check out the next part that will be upcoming on how we actually finish those lids off with the gel coat.